And ladies and gentlemen, with that, it is time for some Sonic 3 and Knuckles with the sound defense. Take it away. Good luck on the run. Hello, everyone. I am the sound defense shrouded in the darkness, as you can clearly see. Uh, with me, I have two excellent commentators. I have someone you may recognize, Joey Baby. Can you say hello? Hey, hey. All right, and to my other virtual side, Alec K, could you say hello? Hello, I'm Alec K47. Uh, if you've seen previous Sonic blocks, I've done a fair amount of commentary for some of those. Uh, even had a couple runs, but this is not about me. This is about a really interesting run. I've been looking forward <laughs> to this, even from a couple years back when Sound Defense first submitted this. I was like, ooh, this is good. I've been trying this for years, and I'm so glad it's finally in. And I hope that I can show the chat something that they have never seen before. So, is everyone ready to go? I assume that silence means yes. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. So, all right, we're counting down. Five, four, three, two, one, go. All right. Good luck. Here we go. So Sonic 3 and Knuckles all emeralds that is 14 emeralds we have to collect which means 14 special stages we have to enter and complete as fast as possible and there is a lot that we need to discuss with regards to the special stages and we'll get started on that in just a second because the first special stage is right around the corner over this way yeah so uh okay. this uh there is a so these big rings where all um, still um, sound defense has to do is find these and clear out all the blue spheres um, as quick as he can. There is uh, a lot of unique routing that's been done. I believe um, Yuji Moya, a good tasser, has uh, developed a lot of strats and routing that uh, helps speed this up faster. Yeah, oh, yeah so, he has been uh, indispensable. And if you paid close attention there, you might have noticed that that first uh, set of blue spheres that was our four by four, he didn't collect all of the outer ring, which is normally how you get them to all disappear and turn into rings. That is a bit of a programming oversight that is going to be taken advantage of at a few different points. Basically, the way that the game detects that all of them have been collected and turns the rest into rings uh, has a little bit of a bug, and you can take advantage of that by getting certain ones, and then it will just turn the rest of them into rings. So pay attention for that. That's a nice little trick that saves a couple seconds here and there. And there's one notable instance uh, coming up later on, but I'll try not to spoil you on that. Oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to that. Alec, I gotta interrupt also, for some... just one second. I apologize, y'all. We have a $10,000 donation from the Yeti oh. right now. Whoa. Awesome, thank, thank you, you so much, the Yeti. And it reads, hey all, Yeti here. I heard there is a donation incentive for a bonus game. I love people who get excited about stars. Put this donation towards firing up the hype train to Raccoon City. Let's unlock that Resident Evil 3 remake run. Uh, thank you so much, Yeti. Anyway, awesome. so something else, something else we need to know about special stages is the developers, they put in these huge seas of red spheres that are basically supposed to act as walls to make sure that the runner or the player cannot go anywhere they want to go. But they're not walls, and we kind of can go anywhere we want to go. You just have mm -hmm. to time your jumps very carefully like so. Walls are suggestions. Yep. You may, you may think that there's a small window for that, but it's, it's pretty lenient once you know um, a good visual cue. Yeah, it's, it's, you don't have to like precisely know the timing for every single jump. There's just some general guidelines you can know and that will help you out, but that doesn't stop it from being terrifying for pretty much everybody watching. And even for the runner, like, I've uh, been doing Blue Sphere and had to do, like, five or six consecutive ones to save myself once, and I managed it, but oh <laughs> boy, <laughs> it is a clench moment for sure. That is just, like, barely on the edge of what is possible. So, well done to you. Yeah, a lot of our commentary is going to be focused on the special stages for now because the normal levels are going to be pretty straightforward for a little while, yeah. at least through Angel Island. And if you're wondering Oops. why is he getting so many uh, emeralds so quickly, uh, there are two reasons for that. One is that they're convenient. Not all of the big rings are going to be convenient, especially with some of the tricks that are going to be happening later on in the run. 
but also when you're able to get all of the emeralds and become supersonic and then later in the sonic uh, and knuckles portion of the game when you're able to become hypersonic there is a lot of extra speed and tech you can get from that oh, yeah we're gonna be seeing so much hypersonic tech not a whole lot of supersonic tech though anyway uh coming up right here this is my favorite special stage in the game and hopefully it becomes clear why so this special stage it has a pretty difficult half and a relatively easier half and as you can probably tell from the way i'm playing this this is in fact the easier half when i get to the difficult half i will ask for focus time oh gosh i am nervous already at how this is going to go so before he gets there bear in mind that each time Sonic turns, you lose a little bit of time, so minimizing turns is part of the routing. Yep, okay, here we go. Please be quiet. Oh, um, thank goodness that's over. Nice. <laughs> well Good done. stuff, yeah. So um, you, you can see that, uh, yeah, when uh, it's, it's much faster if you have to turn around at any point. Instead of turning around in two different uh, turns, you can just use the bumper to just go make you go backwards. But of course, that uh, that will kind of blind your vision a little bit. But uh, so, uh, Sound Defense knows the, the layout of the level, so it's just a matter of just, just trusting his instincts and just uh, doing the turns optimal. Oh yeah, what? that is probably the fastest way you can do that stage. Very what, good. What helps a lot is that the Red Sphere hitboxes are almost non-existent. Like, they're actually just single points. If you fail, if you don't hit that single point, you're not dead yet. So that gives you a lot of leeway. Anyway, speaking of leeway, let's see if I can get a quick cave entry. It requires very good movement throughout the entire stage. Ah, I was so close. If you time it right, you can just rocket directly into this cave, and it's the coolest looking thing ever. You can also anyway. get crushed by uh, the block, the second block appearing if you're in the exact wrong place. I've had that happen. Yeah. Anyway, uh, this special stage is boring, except for the end where I'm going to do a magic trick, but we can probably fit in one donation in the meantime. Awesome. We have a $25 donation from the one, the only Spike Vegeta, who says, let's do this chat $5 train for Jill Valentine and the slaying of the evil nemesis. Hype train! And folks, right. with that, we're real quick, we're at 55000 bucks. We're getting so close. Help us get there. Ready for a magic trick? Boom! What happens? Where did they go? Yeah, you, uh -huh. utilizing the quirk again. There's so there's around like 50-ish blue blue spheres in that area, and just yes. get them all cleared with just 10 yeah. or a few. Yeah, we collect 11 spheres, and on the last one we collect 34 spheres at once. It's the mm -hmm. ultimate example of the algorithm glitch, where we basically trick the game into thinking that the outside of a shape is on the inside, and so it just sweeps outward and grabs every sphere it can find, which is a lot. Anyway, so now we have a bit of an auto-scroller, and I'm going to be selectively pausing because I'm on the Wii U, and the sound of the Wii U is just the worst thing in the world. So I will be pausing to stop the sound of this giant ship. Yeah, Genesis emulation has been known to be pretty sketchy, and the Wii U version no different, so there's a lot of parts where the missiles falling through the ground and uh, the ship flying across gets really loud. Oh, it's yeah. like the worst thing ever. Like, if you have a subwoofer, like, your neighbors get mad. All right, let's see if I can pull off this fight. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. Bam, Robotnik didn't know what hit him. And then use the lightning shield just to grab that capsule. And that's Angel Island. All right, so I would, there is a cutscene skip that you can do here if you're playing any percent, but on all emeralds, it's actually not possible because of how the memory is laid out. Yeah, I don't remember, is it either, it is either not possible at all or it messes up something later, and I don't remember which one it is. It, it is not possible at all. Whoops, okay. I was supposed to dash there. Anyway, so yeah, we haven't had a lot of commentary on the levels so far, 
Uh, we are, Hydro City One is the last bastion of normalcy in this run. Things after this, they go off the rails and they stay off the rails. Very much so. Very off the rails as, as well. Just not even a, a little bit. Like, the next level, I guess you could say, is just a little bit, but it, get, it goes... <laughs> it goes places from there. Oh, oh, oh okay. I, I panicked a little bit. Platform enemy, platform enemy. Yeah, that bounce could be really sketchy. Yeah, okay. All right, I'm gonna do another magic trick. Don't blink. Ah, magic trick complete. One, two, three. Okay, so that looked impossible, but it turns out that if you position yourself right and you have the correct path leading up to it, you can turn on a red sphere and not die. It never saves time. In fact, I lost half a second doing that, but it was worth it. Gotta show it off, huh? Hey. Ah, shoot. Well. Swag may save you a little bit of, uh... Well, it may not save you any time, but... It gets you other perks. Oh, yeah. That's... So now we've got one mini boss to take care of. I'm gonna fight it a little safety because I'm gonna hold on to my rings just so I make sure I have as many lives as I can get because this is a very dangerous run. Execute order 66. Yeah. And this boss is uh, really tricky to optimize. You have any thoughts on that, Joey? Yeah, so uh, the boss is able to get damage as soon as the music starts, so. The boss is slowly falling from the from the top of the screen. You could rev and spin that upwards and get all six hits before the boss even shows itself, but that's incredibly difficult to do, considering the missiles that's surrounding the boss is actively moving, and that's probably one of the hardest things you can do, and it only saves you a couple seconds, but it just shows how hard to optimize that boss. All right, so now things are going to get weird, and I'm going to turn up my TV volume because I like having audio cues. Sorry to my neighbors. Your neighbors are probably interested in it as well. All right, know that. first try. Thank goodness. So what happened there was he died intentionally to unload the Act 1 from the game's memory. And then he used that moving wall with a sun pixel set up to clip into the floor. And because level, because Act One was unloaded, he could underflow the X coordinate by passing the level boundary. Because it's an unsigned integer, the game isn't programmed to handle negative numbers there, so it puts him at the end. It becomes a very large number. Then by uh, getting the camera up to a certain position, he is able to get into the boss room. Uh, where the camera will lock and place him, and then it's just a matter of getting the right positioning and getting the boss. Yep, so the insta-shield is one of the most broken things in the game, because it massively expands your hurt box beyond your hitbox, and so you can just stand in position and not take damage, but you can deal it out in spades. Very useful. I was not supposed to jump there. Ooh, that was That was sketchy, but we're okay. Anyway, it's time for another special stage, and this one... Thankfully, it's pretty chill. It's just routing that's weird. This is going to be just constant examples of the algorithm glitch in action. But there's not a whole lot of difficult execution, so it's a nice break, actually. And if we want to get a donation, we might be able to fit a couple of them in right here. Awesome. Yes. Perfect timing. We have a $200 donation from Claire and Mike that says, Here's to all the hours spent teaching me how to play video games as a little kid. The sound defense is the best big brother in the world. Also, Mike says hi. <laughs> oh, hello, Claire and Mike. <laughs> and then we have a $10 donation from Battlehawk that says, hey, sound defense, good luck on the run. You're gonna do great. A shout outs from the squad. Hey, thank you, squad. One more? Absolutely. We have Avery68 with a $50 donation that says, moonwalk through those special stages. I can assure you, he is. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. So that's special stage number six. It's 
Like I said, a little bit more chill if you know where you're going. Uh, that's, that's a great place for donations because I don't like talking and doing that at the same time. All right, so now I have to escape the crushers and I hate these things so much. Okay, we've escaped the crushers. If you spin dash under those crushers, I know you're tempted to do it, but you could instantly die. And I'm still a little unclear as to why, but never spin dash under those crushers. Anyway, while I was saying that, I was setting up another skip where I just sort of fall through the floor. And here we are at the final special stage of the run. No, that's a lie. The final Chaos Emerald special stage of the run. So this is when I actually failed at Sonic and the Shiny Things, and so I'm hoping that doesn't happen a second time. There are some tricky jumps there, and I've actually made it harder since then. So, uh, give me a minute just to make sure that these jumps go okay. Okay, that was good. I just barely get one of those blue spheres with the tip of my tail. One more. And there we go. We're all done there. So that's pretty scary because you basically have to run face first into a red sphere in order to get enough distance to clear the bumper. That's so, those are some of the worst jumps in the game, so I'm glad those went well. One thing I want to bring up is that, so, so sound defense, uh, if he ever messes up a stage, he would have to find some backup rings, but he can only find the Chaos Emeralds, the first seven in the Sonic 3 half. So once he beats uh, launch phase zone, um, he wouldn't be able to get the normal Chaos Emeralds again. So it's nice that uh, he can get all the Emeralds by um, Horrible Garden, just in case he needs a spare, an extra spare in the other stages. Yeah, there are a few other places I can get some spares. And actually, you can get Chaos Emeralds in Sonic and Knuckles. You just have to take a quick detour to Hidden Palace first. So, all right, so this, I'm gonna do one more. Yeah. Yeah. this level ramps yeah. vertically, uh, like you saw in Metropolis Zone in Sonic 2. And uh, you can use that to unload sprite objects from the game's memory, using it to clip and do things. And now he's in the loopback area. This is what is after the stage in uh, every level. And uh, yeah, you can spawn Act Two's boss here. So yes. that's the thing. This fight is a bit trickier without Super, but uh, with Super, like you can just sit in Robotnik's hitbox and get hits frame perfectly. All right, so the boss is dead, but I'm not done yet. I need to make sure that I don't accidentally soft lock or kill myself. That's still possible. Going this way. Oh, okay, we're good. Yeah, Remnants of Act 2 is still loaded in the beginning of Marble Garden Act 1. And yeah, and the defeating the Act 2 boss is the trigger itself to just go straight to Carnival Knight. So, oh, you'll see him go into Marble Garden 2 and then it's immediately straight to Carnival 1. Yeah, and so there's so many things to explain and I can't explain them because I have to break the game again. Can yeah. somebody please help this me out? This is Wheel Glitch right here. So the game is treating him like he's on the wheel in terms of physics. And uh, that means that gravity is always below Sonic. And he uses that to get a level wrap by falling past the level boundary. And then he's going to set himself up in a particular spot here in order to get all the way to this boss. Uh, there are a couple ways you can deal with this. He is uh, playing with Sonic solo, so he has a bit of an easier setup. Uh, with Tails, uh, he can mess up this boss fight because he wants to maintain Wheel Glitch throughout the entire fight and into Act 2 in order to speed that up by quite a bit. So he has to avoid jumping. So he's rolling off uh, and getting bounces of particular height, doing a little camera manipulation to get this fight to go the way he wants. 59, very well done. Uh, thank you. And now I'm just gonna have a little bit of fun and make the signpost disappear. I'm gonna do another magic trick. By the way, this is super easy, just hold down. And it's gone. Mm -hmm. You can do that at home. It is just as easy as holding down at the end of the stage. Um, but it's also worth mentioning that if he were to have soft locked here, or if it happens in act two, then he would have to do Marble Garden again because he, according to the game's memory, has only beaten up through one act of Marble Garden, which isn't enough to update the save file. Meanwhile, here he is uh, kind of running up the ceiling. Uh, he's going to roll through this elevator. And now uh, he's going to... 
use the wheel glitch and a spin dash here. It has to be a good spin dash, so you can see him do a pause buffer there to make sure he got a quick release to get up to the ceiling here. Now he is falling to the right towards the end of the stage. Uh, because he played the entire uh, game up to this point, uh, he is able to get most of the way uh, through there. In any percent, you can actually fall all the way to the end of the stage. And now he's just uh, going uh, down to this point where he can either continue falling or get hit by one of those flybots. Continuing falling is optimal because then you can do this to get up to the boss quicker. And we're just going to get the drop on Robotnik here. And this should be a 58 second Carnival Night 2. Oh, darn it, he dropped the ball. It was a little slower than I would have liked. It's a very clean carnival, and that's not jumping at all, at least outside of uh, landing on the little um, barrel. Yeah. Not jumping yeah. at all from Act 1 till the boss fight in Act 2. Yeah, the barrel yeah. is uh, the only object that you can jump off of, basically, uh, in order to maintain wheel glitch. All right, so thank goodness we're out of Carnival Night Zone, and we're into Sour Please Zone. So Ice Cap is very similar to Marble Garden in ideally we're not going to complete Act 1 or Act 2 if I can do this right. But this has been trolling me for weeks now, so everyone cross your fingers and hope that this, uh, hope for a good penguin position, please. <laughs> yeah, so uh, in Ice Cap, the general idea is you're taking advantage of Slope Glitch, which is uh, triggered by a sprite object deloading while you are standing on it. So um, in order to do that, there's going to be a bit of a timing trick uh, when he starts walking right on that platform. So now he has slow glitch. He's going to use that to go a particular way through this stage in order to hopefully not hit any sprite objects along the way. You don't want to get stopped because you want to keep slow glitch and not die and not get hit. Um, this looks good. I believe that is Knuckles' path, which is what he wants. This is. Yep. It is, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so now he's doing a little bit of off-screen maneuvering. And if all goes well, you'll see why in just a moment here. I'm trying to entirely circumvent the boss arena, basically. For very entertaining reasons, I promise. Okay. This is the kind of sketchy part. Ooh, I don't know about this one, Chief. I might be a little lower than I want it to be. Oh, I am definitely lower. All right, it's, uh, it was really sketch, but we made it. Yeah, the, your, um, your positioning could be really finicky depending on how fast you go. If you go very fast inside the, the wall, you could uh, end up much lower than you intend to, but there is a backup if you uh, slow down at the right time. And if you recall, oh. I mentioned that because he did not beat um, Marble Garden, uh, properly with both acts being completed that the game save did not update. It has updated to it being in ice cap now, but it has not updated to being in launch base since he only ended ice cap. So what he's doing now is a very precise spin dash release. He missed it late. If you're going to miss it in a yeah. case like this, that's the way you want to miss it because if you miss it early, it's a soft lock. I'm trying it one more time and then I'm using the other method. Fair. Yeah, so, yeah, so it's a three-frame window you could potentially catch. The last one, which requires a spin dash after unpausing, is really tight. And, yeah, and the one before that, you don't have to do anything. And the one before that one, you have to uh, jump a couple frames after unpausing, which the first two are much easier to get. Yeah, but there's a, such a soft lock risk, I'm not doing it. That will do it. Good stuff. I might yeah, have an easy one. Try. Ooh. All right, well, I can probably turn off X. You know what? I'm going to keep my splits going. We'll see. So, hey, you get... Okay, go ahead, Joey. Yeah, so uh, he's approaching uh, not Sonic's boss fight. This is Knuckles' boss fight. Um, he normally fights uh, one of them, but since Knuckles has two of them, um, now two appears. But the interesting about this is that the game is still programmed to consider the act finished once once is, is defeated so um what he can do is keep that one alive past the act one jingle screen and timing um the death accordingly will have the arms not attack you once act two completes and able to defeat it right after act two starts 
since a boss is defeated Act 2, the game will just consider, oh, all right, well, I guess you defeated Act 2 then. And there's the victory peacock, as we like peacock. to call it. It's not necessary, it's just cool. Um, is. But he needed slow glitch in order to uh, not fall down when the platform below him despawned, and uh, that is what allowed him to do the beating Act 2 in that sense trick. Uh, and of course, it updates him to being in Mushroom Hill on the save screen, so even though uh, he was technically in Launch Base 2 there, uh, he had to reset to actually get to Mushroom Hill. Also, you've probably noticed by now that I'm playing on the Wii Virtual Console. I've This is what I've been practicing with, and I'm going to upgrade to an analog Omega SG as soon as this is over, but I just didn't want to adapt to a whole new set of input lags. Uh, going into the GDQ. So everyone in chat, pour one out for my Wii U, which will be retired after this. Anyway, here we got a brand new set of special stages, and I'm starting with the absolute hardest one in the game. I'm terrified of this stage. Like, if you thought the other ones were scary, this is what scares me, so get ready. The first half actually isn't too bad, but soon things will go more difficult. I can't even words right now. All right, everyone just be quiet for a minute. Oh my god, I'm so happy that <laughs> that worked. Nice. Well that's, done. That's so scary. Like, one wrong turn there, and it's over. Ugh, Jujimoy, thank you, and I hate you for showing me that. <laughs> Simultaneously. Yeah, so... Cherry's very grateful you can show it off. Yeah, so that's the first of the Master... Uh, not the Master Emeralds. The, uh... Super, Super Emeralds. Emeralds, yeah. The Master Emerald is... <laughs> the other one that comes into play later. Um, and he could have done a level wrap there, but it doesn't save enough time to be worth it in this category because Mushroom Hill has so many big rings. So it actually saves more time, especially because of ways you could use hypersonic in later stages and combined with the fact that a lot of stages in this are going to be skipped and those skips save much more time than any skips in this stage would. Uh, he is going to be playing this relatively normally and instead collecting a whole bunch of these Super Emeralds. I'm collecting every single one here in Mushroom Hill. And this is the newest route, and it's one of the more fun ones at the moment. Check this stuff out. Did you know you could do that? I just found out recently that this is valuable on this stage. Yeah, it's the same principle as turning on a red sphere. If you just position yourself in the right way, and then you jump, one, two, three, four, at the time something. Anyway, yeah, just position yourself right, jump, you buffer a turn, and you will turn before the yellow sphere actually launches you. And this comes in handy in a few places, but I'm probably only going to do it here because I'm a big scaredy cat. <laughs> Fair. And uh, while he finishes <laughs> up this stage and uh, gets to the next one, I'd say there's a time for a donation or two. Awesome. Oh, yeah. That's a good reminder, folks, that we still have the RE3 remake uh, donation incentive. We're at just about $57,000. We're shooting for $80,000. The hype is real. You're making this happen. Keep the donations coming in. And on that note, we have a $600 donation from the Wrecking Crew community coming through. Uh, yeah. Here's a long one, but I'm going to read through it, okay? Hello from the Wrecking Crew. Shout out to the sound defense from your rock band oh. family. Overjoyed but not surprised to see you absolutely destroying this game. Making it into GDQ is such an incredible milestone, and we thank you for putting your amazing talents on displays for such a worthy cause. We have never been more proud to call you our teammate. No pressure. But Carissa says, if you don't get sub-59, you us a Tails run using a drum controller. <laughs> Here's hoping oh, the Sandopolis one zip treats you right on the first try. But if not, fourth time's a charm, right? Donation incentive goes to the runner's choice. I just want to bug you for a second and say, I want to see both those things. <laughs> uh, you can see a subset of those things, maybe. We'll see. 
<laughs> and finally, we have 50 bucks from Corey169 that says, the, the sound defense making Sonic 3 look easy. It's not. It is so incredibly not. <laughs> no, and I wouldn't say there's an easy category in this game at all. E like, even Glitchless has a lot of really tricky stuff involved in it, and that's probably the easiest category. Uh, this run is going so well that I sort of regret turning off my splits. We'll see how things go, but... No, it yeah, we'll just see how things go. But this is going really well, much better than I'd hoped. Sure, we got some uh, Sonic scientists uh, calculating your runs progression. If, if if I need to, I'll retime this later and see what happens. But yeah, I should be like 10 seconds behind my PB at this point. Anyway, here, this is another one of my favorite special stages, and this is the shortest special stage in the game. If I do this correctly, I'll collect the final blue sphere before the music speeds up. And we got more of the scary red sphere jumps, so. Yeah, let's just focus for the rest of this. Okay, now we can relax. And hold on. Blue sphere, music speeds up. There we go. So that's all of the emeralds we're going to be getting in Mushroom Hill 1. Now I've got a mini boss to fight, and then the emerald hunt continues. And I'm going to wrestle with my chair armrest for a second. But yeah, while we fight this boss, we can probably get another donation. Absolutely. Dragon Delgar donates $25 that says, Hey, sound Yo. defense. <laughs> so hyped to see you run at GDQ with these mind-blowing tricks. Wishing you the best. Dragon Delgar is a world-class rock band player. Hello, dude. Oh, I did not save a tree. That's too bad. Anyway, it doesn't matter, because I'm about to burn down the forest, because I'm going to grab this fire shield. This will save me a little bit of time going forward. It's better than... I am taking a gamble on this being better than doing two bops to get a lightning shield, which was the former strat. Yeah. So we'll see how this goes. The lightning shield, I would say, is definitely better for... Uh, non-emerald runs, but it's really tricky to get it because it's just barely on the left edge of the screen, and you can only just get the uh, signpost to land there. Meanwhile, the flame shield is much easier to actually hit. Oh yeah, there is like a foolproof setup for the flame shield. Yeah, all about positioning and timing your jump. We have to do a little juggling for the lightning one. Anyway, we're going on a bumper ride real quick. And I'm sure Jujumoy will be coming into my chat right now to say that doesn't actually save any time because I didn't time the jumps right. But it looks cool and that's what's important. But yeah, the rest of this stage, the rest of all of these stages are actually not too bad. They're going to look bad on screen probably, but red sphere jumps are not a huge deal once you get used to them, except for this one, maybe? This That one sucks because, like, just as I'm preparing to jump, uh, the game speeds up, which is the worst time for the game to speed up. When I'm about to jump through, like, a, a field of fire, basically. That's two... That's five emeralds, I can't count. That's emerald number five. Next is emerald number four, and last it'll be emerald number one. We did this in the... There is, like, a set order of these emeralds if you play Sonic and Knuckles. If you're playing Sonic 3 and Knuckles, you can get them in whatever order. So the order is 7, 6, 3, 2, 5, 4, 1. It's mostly arbitrary, except for the last one. Oh, shoot. All right, anyway, what do we have here? Could it be a complete failure on my part? Yes, it is. There we go, it's another special stage. And so this one... It's a very straightforward one. There's almost no way to speed this up except for at the end. So this is another good time for donations. Absolutely. We're getting a bunch of them. Thank you, everyone, for keeping to donate. Uh, AKA The Cupcakes donates $20 and says, GDQ and MSF are the shining chaos emeralds in these dark times, guiding all towards hope for a better future to come. Shout out to all my friends in the Sonic Speedrun community who are all watching this together in Discord. 
Awesome. Thank you so much for the donation. And here's one from Windchaser316 that donates $50 and says, My son loves Sonic the Hedgehog, so we decided to make a donation while we enjoy the runs. This is a great event for a great cause. Gotta go fast. One more. Absolutely. We have a $20 donation from Ninja Ben that says, I got my dad the Sega Genesis Mini for Christmas, and we love playing the Sonic games together. Watching this speedrun makes me want to try a speedrun myself. Good luck with the rest of the run. Hey, thank you all so much for the donations. And you'll notice I just sort of ignored the yellow spring that you're supposed to take at the end of that level. But it's very slightly faster to do a terrifying pair of jumps over the spheres. Anyway, we've only got one more emerald to go, and then if I get this in one try, I'm going to be extremely happy with this run. 14 up, 14 down. First, I have to navigate there. And this is something I'm actually... Oh, that was wacky. Did anyone see that? Yeah, that's what happens if you get above the effect of the wind, and it, um, it either despawns or it doesn't extend up that high. All right, so I'm tired of this fire seal now. I'm going to lose it. And here is the very last special stage. So I mentioned before we can do most of these in whatever order we like, but this emerald has to be last because once we get the final super emerald, there is a small cutscene where the master emerald activates. But if you are not centered when that cutscene is supposed to happen, there will be just a slow pan over to center, and that's just needlessly wasted time. So we always get this emerald last. And beyond that, it's just personal preference. But yeah, this is... This one is not particularly difficult, but it's routed in a very specific way to allow for those pinpoint turns that you saw in those little four... In those little two-by-twos. Yeah, this one, unless you follow a specific route, it's, it's one of the ones where it's easy to get lost in. And while there's a oh, lot gosh. of emptiness, uh, and it's not necessarily hard to keep going. <laughs> it can take you a while if you don't know exactly where you need to go next. Yeah, it's how not. Long, how long would you consider uh, the the a pan from the and from an emerald from the far left or right? How long would that take? From the far left or right, like maybe five, seven seconds. I want to say. That's about what I'd say as well. Yeah. Anyway, so say hello to Hypersonic. Also, this is your photosensitivity warning. There's going to be some screen flashes going on, and I apologize for that. Yeah, not really much you can do about that, except uh, try to minimize your use of the air dash. Um, but the screen flashes white when that happens, and yeah. And sometimes it is really unavoidable. Yeah, a, little, a little hard to die, is yeah. Well, yeah, we're, you saw almost no supersonic in this run. You're going to be seeing a lot of hypersonic. And we're resetting to skip a cutscene because my save file ticked over. If I wasn't playing on the Wii U, I'd be resetting for a lot more cutscene skips. Anyway, here's Flying Battery. So unlike most of the levels in this game, we are going to be playing this one as intended. Let me just set this up. This looks good. And there we go. Exactly as intended. Whoops. Oh, I got the lightning shield. <laughs> yeah. So the, in case that wasn't obvious, that that is clearly not intended. So scrolling the screen down and spin dashing upwards, it skips a trigger that uncurls you from ball form. And once you hit the mesh, it spin dashes you off of it, and you maintain the property as well as slope glitch. And you can just essentially hold the right to the entirety of the stage and reach the boss fight. And you lose both of these glitches by interacting with a sprite object like the boss, but that's OK. You can get slope glitch right back at the end mm -hmm. of this boss by standing on it as the uh, undefeated boss is replaced with the defeated boss. I'll be doing that right now. Just got to line myself up right. This looks good. Yeah, we're good. So yeah, slope glitch once again. A uh, minute. Didn't get the 59. That's OK. This We're worried about RTA right now. We don't want these time bonuses. Anyway, I need to do some pauses to make sure I get this right. That's one. That looks good. OK, and now I really need to carefully time this jump, so give me a second. Nope. 
Hey, that was perfect. That's exactly where I wanted to end up. Now I mm -hmm. lose the shield, and we're going to replace it with something better. Again, namely a little bit of a photosensitivity warning here again, because he is going to be using the air dash in order to skip this boss. Ah, shoot. If I'm really good, I can get it in like a single go. That did not happen. Second try works too. So, based, what happened there? Uh, hypersonic, the dash outpaces the camera. And uh, say hello to Robonix's pants, by the way, because I've messed up all the sprites. So, Hypersonic's dash outpaces the camera, and also, if a sprite object is not on camera, it effectively doesn't exist. So you put these two things together, and you have Hypersonic just dashing straight through the right hand laser. If I'm really good, I can just jump straight through and never even touch the ground, and then the sprites get really hilarious, but I could not pull it off this time. Still gonna have a nice easy fight, though. Yeah, I want a quick donation. Absolutely. We have a $25 donation from Nuclear Reaction that says, the squad is hype in chat for the sound defense. What an absolute gamer. Thank you so much, Nuclear, Re Nuclear Reaction. I appreciate that. She stopped her stream early so she could watch this, and I'm very appreciative. And yeah, what's next? Next is Sandopolis Act 1. And... I don't really like playing this stage, so I'm just not going to play this stage. What do you guys think? I mean, it's fun to play it glitchless, but it also takes a long time. Yeah, so let's just forget this stage. Let's just go past it. And, it, it, uh, and level I, rep, so... I'm so glad I got that, because if I had failed it, I would have looked like such a tool. Yeah, like, um, what Sound Defense did was a small self-pixel manipulation by uh, doing a two-tap spin dash at the start of the level, and after the sand drops Sonic down, within a two-frame window, you can uh, just clip into the ground and just initiate a level wrap. Really simple. Yep. And that and stage used to be notoriously one of the hardest stages to do, um, glitched. It used to utilize tails to sink you into the floor and get enough zip speed off the floor to uh, initiate a level rep. Yeah, I'm so glad. I never learned that. It looked terrible. I'm glad I don't have to now. It's it really much. It, is. it was awful. I tried by hand, and I'm like, no, I'm, I'm, I don't want to do this trick. <laughs> <laughs> so while I do technically know how to do it, it's like I never got good at it because I didn't want to, and. Um, we have time for probably one quick donation before um, Act 2 really gets going. Absolutely. Yep. 20 bucks from Megan46 that says, I look forward to every GDQ, and even though this is online, it's still as good as ever. The sound effect is the sound defense is having an insane run, and it's a joy to watch. This really is an incredible run. I am so glad everything... The only thing that didn't go right was launch base. And if... I'm... Uh, what was I going to say? Basically, if this keeps up, I am going to try something very dangerous and sketchy at the end of Death Egg, and we'll see how it goes. Oh, yeah. That, that would be fun. Um, so, Act 2 is not as uh, significantly bugged as a lot of other stages, but it does wrap vertically, and there are a lot of shenanigans you can take advantage of as a result of that. So he just spin dashed through two doors and some oh. spikes there by getting them off the screen so that they did not exist and then passing through them before they got back on screen. Um, and then a uh, little thing you can try at home here, if you get up to this platform, jump from the flat, and uh, he's waiting for that platform there, and then just hold left against the wall, you'll clip through the floor every single time there. Yeah, very easy trick. Not the easiest trick in the game, I'll point that out when we get there. Uh, now for what is, for me, the hardest trick in the game, because I don't know monitor clip yet. So let's yeah. see how this goes. I'm doing this the slow way. That's... This looks okay. No, that was me. I was greedy. Shoot. I'm trying to get myself stuck in the wall, and it's notoriously tricky to do. Yeah, essentially what um, the goal here is to get on a very precise height. Not high enough to go over the loop but there is a small little seam you can clip through by just holding right off a certain bit of height. You can clip inside the wall on the right and skip the entire sand section that rises up. There you go. 
There's a quick climb upwards, and you can uh, spin dash past the area where you normally would need the sand, and you can just initially another screen wrap to clip through the pillar. Yep. That saves then, more time than you think. And then I complete it with the transformation to hypersonic. I'm so happy that went as well as it did. This is such a good run. I can't believe this is happening. And that's also a hypersonic skip right there. Just jump upwards through that sand waterfall. And so it's a joy ride through the rest of the stage. But I'm going to try and go for one last glitch at the very end that does nothing. It's purely cosmetic. But if I get it, it will be hilarious. Oh, yeah. So I've gotten better at it. We'll see if I can pull it off. And one second. I did it, yes! So this is awesome. As far as I can tell, I went so fast that I bypassed the trigger to start the boss fight. And a lot of things just stop working correctly when that happens. <laughs> as you can see, the background is messed up. The ghosts are now blood ghosts, and I'm going to drown in a sand waterfall. <laughs> so I gotta say, I've never seen that one before, so that's a treat. <laughs> uh, I've, I have been practicing that specifically so I could pull it off here. Anyway, Lava Reef, I am going to be very careful to preserve my rings, because Hypersonic is going to be instrumental here. But there's a lot of small clips here that can be done more easily than you think. Here's one. Line up, jump, move, and we just sort of fall through the floor there. All right, so I'm good on rings so far. I, just, I don't want to lose the shield quite yet. But yeah, there's one clip. There's going to be one other clip. I'm going to do stair clip, not elevator clip, just for reference. Because I never got good at elevator clip, but somehow I got really good at stair clip. Oh, um... Okay, just traverse very carefully, and we're okay. Oh, uh, nope, no good. Yeah, second try, I'll take it. I'll take that life, too. Alright, 49, get one more ring. Alright, here we go. So, is, can anyone explain stair clip? Yeah. The gist of it is that the way the game tracks your collision um, um, and when you're whether you're going to be stopped by or put on top of a stair depends on your uh, your the angle you're going at and the speed you're going at. And if you get those right, nice. If you get those right, yeah. the uh, that's a good yeah. The uh, <laughs> game won't recognize which it's supposed to do, and you'll just kind of clip through the stair like it doesn't have any collision. But it's really precise to get that. Yeah, there is a there is a positioning you can do for a one-tap spin dash that makes it a lot easier. It's, it's still finicky. It took me two tries. Sometimes I can get it in one. There's another trick where you can clip underneath an elevator, and a lot of people find that easier. I haven't learned it, and I, I'll just stair clip. Anyway, this zone is my kryptonite. I'm generally very bad at Lava Reef 2. So, here's hoping that this doesn't become a disaster. We'll see. So yeah, this... We're not going to glitch anything for a little while, so we can probably get some donations in. Absolutely, we have a $25 donation from Nooks Tenma that says, Sonic Block! Gotta go fast, gotta go faster, faster, faster! Faster to that RE3 remake incentive. And speaking about that RE3 remake incentive, we are just at $60,000, only $20,000 away from the $80,000 goal to get us to that RE3 remake incentive. You are making that happen. Keep it coming in. Thank you so much. Go ahead and go one more. Absolutely. We have, let's see, um, Oh, uh, Damon Ree donates $200 and says, I can't even tell you how many hours I put into Sonic 3 during my childhood. I always played as Knuckles, but this Sonic run is, well, destroying my childhood in the best way possible. <laughs> Thank you to everyone making this possible. Runners, commentators, hosts, tech, and everyone behind the scenes. Lots of love to you all. All right, well, let's, so I'm going yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm to skip the boss here, but kind of carefully because I could maybe soft lock the game. I hope not. I did in practice. All right, so I'm just gonna use hypersonic and jump over the boss trigger here. And I don't believe it. I'm stuck. Oh, I just, no. I, 
This happened in practice too. There is nothing I can do but reset and try Lava Reef again. That's really unfortunate. But so, I was sort of overdue for something unfortunate. Yeah, so um, a lot of things can go wrong in this game. That's one of them. The uh, skip itself is technically a little bit easier than the other method, which is a stair clip, which um, I, I'm sure there's a super setup for it, but I don't know what that would be, and I'm not good enough to find it. But the super method there is pretty simple. You just uh, get up to a point where you can uh, do a uh, an air dash. You're actually pressing down there because you're going down from Sonic's perspective and that will take you up to uh, the end of Knuckles' path where he glides across and then uh, skips the boss. And uh, you're able to get above there and uh, by getting all the way to the right there, you would uh, go right into Hidden Palace. Unfortunately, um, there is also some collision that you have to avoid on top of the stage, and um, if you don't, you can fall down into that uh, little corner and soft lock. Yeah, this is why uh, my estimate is 13 minutes higher than my PB, because of things like this. So oh, yeah, it, oh, man. The run was and, the run is still going really well. Yeah, and usually, um, so the the game only saves per zone, and when things go wrong in in Act Two that will require a reset, that's where the fat time losses occur, which makes this gun the, the this run really a uh, really a pain to really uh, get momentum going. Because any trick that that happens like that that goes uh, that goes pretty sour. Be really detrimental. Yeah, the time yeah. losses come fast and furious in this game, and it's really easy to get some big time losses because the tricks are hard. Yeah, I'm gonna lose like four minutes because of one bad input. That's the story of Sonic 3. But Sound Defense, it gives us some and time to give you some a donation if you don't mind. Uh, you have like two minutes to read off donations, so go for it. Perfect! Nori110 donates $200 and says, Hey, a sound, Nori here. The Son This Sonic 3 and Knuckles run has been amazing. Excellent having known you all those years after oh, you shoved me the, uh, showed me the run that paved my own path into speedrunning. Best of luck in the remainder for the run. This goes towards the RE3 incentive, and thanks to all the staff for this wonderful event, and good luck on all the upcoming runners. Got another one. Yeah, that's what happens when I get trolled. Sorry, I just have to say <laughs> no, that. No, no, not at all. No need to apologize. Supersonic donates $20 and says, I may not make an appearance in this run, but I can sure donate for the cause. Really cool to see my friend Sound Defense do all Emeralds run. You are awesome. Let's put this towards RE3. And have another. We have a $50 donation from Dance Dad. Dance Dad says, Dance Dad is enjoying this Sonic block a lot. Will these 50 rings let the sound defense transform into super sound defense? Oh, it won't? Oh well, maybe next game. Go kick butt on Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Shoutouts to the Banana Bunch. Keep on grooving all and stay safe. I would like to say I'm just damage boosting repeatedly through this stage, but this is just actually how bad things go when I lose my fire shield. So my apologies to my family who I am actively shaming at this time. And they're watching. They know they're disowning me as we speak. Okay, here we go. Let's give this another try and let's be a little more careful with our inputs. If this doesn't work, I'm just getting the stair clip and we'll see how that goes. I might regret saying that. Okay, there this time go. I made it past. Could you could you go? Thank you. Good stuff. All right, so you didn't see any of that. This is my first time through Lava Reef, and now we're in Hidden Palace. Ah, straight jumps. When you're trying to spin dash really fast, you will sometimes get a frame-perfect straight jump instead, which just stops your momentum immediately. And if you release it one frame after that, you get the optimal speed out of the spin dash. So there's times where uh, you're going to be more prone to it if you're going for the absolute optimal spin dash speed, which is necessary for some tricks. Oh no. So bringing Tails oh, no. along uh, could speed this uh, boss fight faster. 
by keeping Knuckles stuck in a stun lock, by having Tails uh, just keep him steady while Sonic just bounces in on top of Knuckles, can speed up the fight by four to five seconds or so. But with Solo, you just have to wait till like, um, Knuckles jumps for each hit. Yeah. Which is not there, the worst. There's a big reason why I don't bring Tails along for the run. It's because I hate him. And he's just... <laughs> The, the AI, I don't actually hate him, but I really hate I do. having to manage his. I really hate having to manage his AI. Joey yeah. can tell you all about that. Yeah, Joey absolutely could. Uh, the gist of whether or not you bring Tails is uh, Tails does save a small amount of time over the course of the run, but not nearly as much as he used to because there have been solo Sonic strats figured out for pretty much every skip that uh, Tails would be required for, except for a couple minor ones. Yeah, so currently Breen Tails saves around, I want to say, 30-ish seconds, maybe 30 or less seconds at a run. And those are hidden powers, as um, I've mentioned before with the Knuckles fights. Uh, the entirety of Carnival Night could make Act 1 and 2 go by a bit faster, and the final boss with the finger phase 1 strat. No, you're the final uh, boss. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah, with any percent, you don't have to do the final final boss with emeralds, but Tails can speed up the, the finger strat yeah. by like also, two to three seconds. Also, what I just did was the easiest trick in the game. You uh, get a lightning shield, stand on the left side, hold down, wait for the screen to go down, jump and hold right, and then do a lightning shield jump midair, and you've skipped like two thirds of Sky Sanctuary. It's very easy. Wow, I'm bad at video games. Who knew? Get back here, you jerk. Okay, that wasn't a great fight, but otherwise that was a very good Sky Sanctuary. So, there's gonna be a super long cutscene at the end of this that we're not going to watch, because we have more important things to do. We've got to save the world. Also, yeah. something I should point out is that um, I'm waiting a very small amount of time before entering my save file, because a frame perfect entry into my save file could just delete some of my emerald data. And it's confounding and it's ruined runs before. I but have now, no idea if that happens on Genesis, by the way. Uh, I don't either. Uh, anyway, now we're in Death Egg, and this is a great level because there's some cool super hypersonic tech, and it's also the best track in the game. I know I said Ice Cap was the one that I enjoy. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay, I timed that really badly. Um, you didn't see that. But anyway, yeah, best track in the game. And when I'm paying attention, it's just like a nice, easy victory lap through the game. So I'm gonna try that again, and I'm not gonna be a doofus about it. I so also have. Yeah, so this is a different route you can take here at the bottom. You can barely make it past the bottom shaft using a hypersonic dash, and it skips a lot of the normal level that you take if you don't go this route. And normally this is uh, just for Tails' path, but using hyper, you can get up there. Yeah, losing a ring here is the end of the world, because I have to do that. And if I can't go hypersonic, then it doesn't happen. All right, let's see if I can get a good graviton here. I hope so. Oh, that was a really good Graviton. I even got all the rings. All right, so we're nearly done with this act, actually. We just skipped such a massive amount of it with that route. And if any of you have bad memories about this boss, well, uh, just try coming here as Hypersonic. Oh, yeah. This, this is a nice, chill revenge fantasy right here. I'm gonna sit here, take a drink of water. As a non-emerald runner, I am foaming in the mouth of how, how easier this is. <laughs> I'm gonna take another drink of water. <laughs> so that's easily one of the worst fights without emeralds, because you have to worry about uh, damage boosting and making sure the platforms are just equally aligned so it doesn't disturb your bounces on the second phase. But with super, it doesn't have to worry about that at all. Yeah, so I would, if I was on anywhere near world record pace, I'd be trying a skip right here, but I'm not, so I won't. Instead, I'm just going to do this as hypersonic, and it'll be a good donation times, but does anyone want to give an overview of the skip I'm not doing? 
Yeah. Yeah, so what's, um, what sound effects can do here is um, right up below, or I guess above in this case, um, the floor under, you can clip into the wall with the staircase and making you clip through by unloading it, by panning the screen down and spin dashing upwards to clip you into the wall. And when you're inside the wall, you can initiate a spin dash or a lightning shield jump to line yourself up in the wall and pretty much zip to the very end of the stage, or at least into the boss fight for this stage. And that saves around two plus minutes, but it's an incredibly risky to go for. Yeah. And usually yeah. only in a mistake costs you over 40 plus seconds per and death. And one quick thing uh, before we go to donations, when you're upside down, the everything switches except the uh, D-pad uh, for the light dash. So it is really counterintuitive uh, when you're upside down and you just have to learn <laughs> to uh, in, uh, kind of unlearn temporarily the directions that you're used to inputting. Yeah, we can get a couple donations in here. No problem. We have a $10 donation from TitaHax210 that says, had to show up for the sound defense running Sonic 3. The Shantae speedrunning community is cheering for you. Donation goes to the runner's choice. And then here it is. We have a $5,000 donation from Fangamer. And it says, Hi everyone, Fan Gamer here. It gotta go fast, gotta donate fast. We see the donation total is quickly approaching $500,000. We are getting close, folks. Wow! Let's see just how fast we can get there. Hop on that $5 donation train and be sure to check out our SGDQ 2020 collection at fangamer.com slash GDQ, where 100% of the profits go to support MSF our SGDQ 2020 online virtual, uh, official virtual attendee badges have a goal to reach too. If you, we sell 500 of the Giga Badge tier before the end of the SGDQ, they'll get a shiny foil upgrade. More than 350, 350 have already been claimed. Be sure to get yours while you can. All right, and while that donation was being read, I finished the entire fight. <laughs> and so now I'm setting up one last trick for the final boss, and this could kill me. We'll see how it goes. But the, right now, the floor is not where it appears to be, which is why I have this lightning shield. Yeah, spin dashing to the very last uh, area. Um, it un unlo it uncenters the the floor on the on the on the ground, so the collision is more further to the left, but could die on the right. The collision is visual is visually there on the right side, but if if a sound defense goes to the right, he will fall to his death. And it's yeah. useful for the second and third phase of the fight. Yeah, I took that really safe because his finger was like right over the death zone. Mm -hmm. But I, I it's, worth it cause it's worth it because now I get to do this. And just lay waste. And that's Great Eggman Robo done quick. So now there's a little bit left here. And then it would be time if this were an any percent run, but it's not. Oh, oh, don't fall, don't fall, don't fall, don't fall. Okay. Good save. <laughs> that, I, that was that was very risky and thank, stupid of me. Thank goodness for Glitch Floor. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I always forget where exactly Glitch Floor is. Anyway, this would be time in a normal run, but now we've got one more thing to go. I think this is the first time we've ever seen this at a GDQ. This is the Doomsday Zone. So now I'm careening through space as hypersonic, collecting rings, chasing Robotnik to get that Master Emerald back. And oh my yeah. god, Mike's controls are so janky. And he's probably going to collect a lot fewer rings than I would recommend most of you would get, at, or even fewer than I probably would. Like, I'm gonna have about 80 rings when I go into this uh, next phase of the fight. Oh, that's not happening. If I have 60, that'll be something. Well, actually, no, I'm gonna have a bunch, I think. I won't have 80, but... We're just gonna have to be really careful with some of these missiles. So this is the penultimate boss coming up right here. This ship, he's gonna fire missiles at me and I have to redirect those missiles into his face. Here's some very careful maneuvering. And also if I ever get hit by one of those bullets, it sends me careening off course and then everything just gets so much harder. Oh, that was close. That's six missiles. Oh, that was, what was I doing there? Where are the missiles? Oh gosh. Oh, I don't know what's happening. Okay, that's good. So, we're getting close to time. Time is gonna come up 
and fade to white after the next boss. And, so uh, there's only... Mm -hmm. And yep. uh, in chat, you can go ahead and raise your hand if you're like me and didn't realize that you could just spam the jump buttons and catch up to him really quickly and easily until, like... I didn't know that either! Yeah. Yeah, and I, I got, like, guff for it in Sonic and the Shiny Things. Half the chat was like, I didn't know that. The other half was like, how did you not know that? So <laughs> it's, it's very divisive. Anyway, I forget what count we're on, but it's okay. We're going to have a minute. There we go. All right, get ready. And time. That'll do GGs. it. GG. That went so much better than I'd hoped, except for Lava Reef, which none of you saw. No. Lava Reef never happened. It, it, it happened once. <laughs> but what was my RTA on that one? 103.49. All right. If, man, Lava Reef by itself ruined my sub hour. That's, that's a disappointment. But no, it's way less than my estimate. And honestly, I'm going to chalk that up as a win. This could have gone so much worse. So thank you so much everyone for everyone for everything basically thank you to my commentators thank you to people in the sonic community uh, sega junkie supersonic dmtm uh, so many names that i can't remember right at the moment animachine hypnotics nimputs there's a lot of you if i forgot you it's because i have a bad memory it's not because i don't care everyone in the shante community uh, everyone in the wrecking crew everyone i know personally everyone in chat thank you for being cute as heck and everyone cool everywhere if you're cool i'm personally shouting you out right now so and that right there you just saw what happens you get the good ending the best ending for getting all 14 emeralds you get that extra uh, little screen of knuckles uh standing there wistfully with his hands clasped because he's realizing the deep affection he's felt for us this entire time so that's some spicy lore right there but that's I think that's going to do it for me. There's nothing else to say here. So anything else from Joey or Alec? This is a hard run, and you did good. Yeah, that is much better than, uh, you know, what the average uh, kind of run would get. Because, you know, getting past um, Ice Cap and Marble Garden, Carnival Night are no easy feat, especially first try. There is a lot of more points that could easily have gone wrong, and, and Sound Defense has gone through it cleanly. Hey, thank you very much. And thank you so much for GDQ for uh, just putting on this great event. And so everyone, please stick around for Sonic Heroes run by Critical Sid, the final piece of the Sonic block. Thank you so much, and peace out. And thank you, Sound Defense. What an awesome run of Sonic 3 and Knuckles. That was so wild. Getting to see a run we haven't seen before like that here at GDQ. So thank you so much, Sound Defense, for a great run. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we are still plugging the RE3, the Resident Evil 3 remake incentive. Check this out. We are at $62,619 towards that incentive. We need $80,000. Folks, we're almost at a half a million dollars raised for, for GDQ, SGDQ 2020. We need your help to get there. Keep the donation train coming. I'm going to try to read all the donations as fast as I possibly can. We're getting there, but we got to keep the hype train going so we can see. Bonus game number three, Resident Evil 3 Remake New Game Standard. Let's make that happen. And with that, folks, we are going to go to a Twitch ad.
Absolutely. And we are back. You are watching Summer Games Done Quick 2020 online, powered by Twitch. And right now, you are making the RE3 remake incentive happen. We're almost there, folks. We're getting so close to half a million. We're at $62,859 towards an $80,000 incentive goal. You can do it. Let's start reading some donations, folks. Here we go. Uh, let's see, anonymous, an anonymous donation for five bucks. And it says, soft locks mean more time to get RE3. Thank you to all the amazing GDQ staff. And thank you to the Sound Defense for a mind blowing run. Couldn't agree with you more. Such a great run by the Sound Defense. We have a $100 donation from Anonymous that says, that RE3 remake incentive is breaking the seal on donations for me, this SGDQ. Thank you so much for that $100 Anonymous donation. Aaron53 donates $100. Let's go for Resident Evil 3 remake. Absolutely, folks, keep it coming. Here we go. Irvi has a $10 donation and says $5 Resident Evil 3 train hype and another $5 for the sound defense absolutely destroying Sonic 3. Okay. And we have a $100 donation from Jill Valentine 168 that says, you want stars? I'll give you stars. And with that, folks, we have an interview with Mike Wave that we're going to send you to right now. Here we go. Thank you very much, Lat Mackey. Uh, hello, everybody watching SGDQ 2020 online. Uh, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jobs. I am joined by Mike Wave, who is going to be hopefully Fingers crossed, everybody. Let's keep those fingers crossed. Hopefully running Resident Evil 3 Remake for us in not too long. How are you doing, Mike? I'm doing great. Uh, the incentive is uh, making me a little nervous, but I think <laughs> we can get there in time, you know? Well, speaking of that incentive, uh, Resident Evil 3 is one of our bonus games of this marathon, which means that we only get to see it if we hit the donation incentive total for it. Right now, I'm gonna do a full live check on it. We are at $64,134.70 out of $80,000 for that incentive. So we could totally make this happen. That is just over $15,000, and I have seen way bigger pushes than that before at GDQ's <laughs> past. So everybody out there, please, be sure to be getting those donations in. Even $5 can absolutely make a difference, and it all goes to Doctors Without Borders. We would love to see this run. Speaking of, if you're not familiar with the run, that's what we're here for. We want to get you to know a little bit more about it. So, uh, Mike, I've got some questions for you. The first one, yep. probably a, a bit of an obvious one. I think this is, when, when this game came out, this was everybody's first question to every streamer of this game, but it's good to get yeah. it out there. How did you feel about Resident Evil 3 Remake versus Resident Evil 2 Remake? Do you have a preference on one or the other? Uh, did you just love them both individually? H how do you feel? All right, so my feelings on this are pretty complicated. Mm. I feel like I enjoyed RE2 more as a casual game, but as a speed game, I think RE3 is uh, quite a bit better, mostly because there's additional mechanics. Uh, RE2 is a great game, but the speed run uh, involves a lot of just holding W down corridors. Mm. No offense to any of the runners of that game. It's... There's a lot more to it than that. But with RE3, you have the dodge mechanic that they brought back from the original, but it's way better in this game. That makes it a lot more fun to run, in my opinion. So I have put a lot more hours into RE3 just because of that. And that but yeah, like, uh, oh, go so, ahead. No, no, please continue. Yeah, so despite, uh, you know, the shortcomings of the game, which is like mostly like the missing content that a lot of people were uh, pretty upset about, I, I think it's still a great game overall. I really, really enjoyed it. Yeah, and it, it's unsurprising to me to have to hear you say that it's a great game because I think I've heard that from everybody who has played it and stuff. But uh, I, I, surprisingly, I've often heard the other side that a lot of the people prefer the Resident Evil 2 speed run. So it's really cool to see that like it's still you know it's just as alive as which Final Fantasy is the best or which Resident Evil is the best, yeah. right? It's <laughs> it's the same kind of thing. You got fans on yeah. uh, in either camp, uh, and yeah, you, people are still arguing over the original. <laughs> <I> can, like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I can only imagine. Yeah. Uh, 
Now, you did mention that dodge mechanic, and that was something, as, as somebody who hasn't actually played a lot of Resident Evils, I just played Resident Evil 2 Remake as my first yeah. Resident Evil recently. I was sorely oh. missing a dodge mechanic, because I, I'm used to, to <laughs> some Dark Souls and some, some Kingdom Hearts where I can just yeah, yeah. dodge for my enemies. I was missing that. I heard RE3 has the dodge. How does that really, like, change things? Is, is that It feels like it would be a uh, core part of the, the speed run comparatively. It, 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 is a, it is a very, very core part. Uh, in the run, you're going to see me do a lot of uh, very scary looking strats where i'm going to dodge directly into enemies faces oh, man. at the very correct time and then just perfect dodge as soon as like they are about to grab me uh because it is faster than just running around everywhere wow and and we're all doing this in caution because you act like re2r with claire uh jill does run a little bit faster in caution so you have to do the entire run uh at pretty low health yeah, when you say in caution there, that's that's really basically the health mechanic in the of the game, yeah. right? Healthy versus mm -hmm. caution versus like yeah, even yeah, it's the health state. Low. Yeah, that's that's incredible. So you have to do all of these very precise dodges while at low <laughs> health. Going to be yeah. looking forward to that one. Please, everybody, let's make this this uh, run happen with those donations. Uh, I did want to ask you as well because menuing is something that comes up a lot with RPG speedruns, but not often thought oh. about with. Um, I don't even know what kind of game to classify it as, just an action game, I guess, an pu action puzzle game yeah. to a degree for Resident Evil. Um, menuing isn't often thought of that much with these kinds of games, but I know it's huge in the Resident Evil games. How does, uh, how does it go for RE3? What's yeah. difficult about it? Uh, so the menu in RE3 is a little bit clunkier and slower than the RE2 one. The RE2 one was like really, really fast, but mm -hmm. the RE3 one is still really important. Uh, if you're a runner at a game, it's... I wouldn't say any of them are as complicated as the RE4 menu, which is like literally just Tetris. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, but the RE3 one is still really important. If you're running the game, you have to kind of memorize where everything is going to go at the like at this point in the run when you pick up this item and all that, because you don't want to spend like any time at all in your mm -hmm. menu because that's just going slow, you know. So it is a very core part of like almost pretty much every single Resident Evil game. Oh, wow. So is there any amount of, like, RNG in this run that's really going to be a big problem, or uh, is it mostly pretty set and you know what you're going to do? All right, so uh, this is a pretty funny topic because when the game came out, we originally thought RE3 had way more RNG than RE2. Mm -hmm. uh, RE2R, I'm talking about. Uh, but as the game has progressed, we found out that most of the game is actually, like, pretty consistent. Like, the only really RNG-heavy part of the game is uh, the beginning. So... Like, we already reset a lot. Like, if you run any game, you reset a lot of at course. the beginning of a run. So it, it makes it even more reset heavy because you're just, like, hoping like hoping that the zombies will behave. But after you get to a certain point in the game, uh, it's it starts becoming very, very execution heavy mm -hmm. compared to RE2R, which, like, uh, like towards the end, you have, like, lab lickers and stuff. Like, just a lot of enemies who can uh, just really destroy your run. But it's not really the case in RE3R, no. Once you get to a certain point, it's very much a skill and execution based. That's great to hear. Always the kind of thing that I love to see, especially when it is a big donation incentive, everybody. Come on, you got to get those <laughs> I Listen, I got to plug it like every 30 seconds. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> but I did have, uh, we actually were able to get some questions from social media, and I had one that I saw here that I thought was pretty interesting. Uh, Starwin, at OD underscore Starwin, asked, if there's another remake in the series, what game would you want it to be? What's next up on oh. your list? Code Veronica. Code Veronica, please. Mm. I love that game. It is probably a top three Resident Evil game for me. I really want to see that okay. game get remade. That's a not, I, you know, I was sitting here going like, <laughs> RE4. Like, that's what I thought for sure was going to be, yeah. you know, the next Trust, answer. RE4 is like one of my top games of all time, but I, I, I think RE4 aged pretty well mm. uh, okay. in comparison to Code Veronica. Yeah. That's interesting. I, I love that answer. I think it's always a good, uh, it, it shows a lot of thought put into it when the uh, the reason being that you think one yeah. ages well and one doesn't. They, a game can still be great many years later. Uh, yeah. Now, th this game is a pretty scary game, you know, with the remake a little bit, but obviously when you're speedrunning it, you, you know where all of the uh, scary stuff's going to come, but that doesn't mean there aren't going to be scary moments for you as a runner, mm -hmm. stuff that's going to be really difficult to, to perform or stuff that you're just worried about. For everybody yeah. out there who has not seen this run and maybe wants just that one moment, that one reason to check it out and see if they're interested, what's that scariest moment for you in the run? Uh, it's definitely the second Nemesis fight. Uh, mm -hmm. So the bosses in this game, spoiler alert, are all against Nemesis in like various different forms. Mm -hmm. But the second Nemesis fight in particular is just really really precise like you need to land some shots with the grenade launcher that are nearly frame perfect and that is the part with like 
if you're on a world record pace run, you are just like, I need to get this shot. Like, I am on such a good pace. I need to get this shot. And you'll see a lot of runners sweating at that particular <laughs> moment. Got to yeah. get, I swear, we need, like, heart mon heart rate monitors to just be more, like, <laughs> commonplace and easy to, to get and hook up to streams because that's I was thinking about the best oh, sorry. thing. I, I was thinking about getting one set up just, <laughs> just so people can see my heart Perfect. rate. Perfect. If you do, I, I, uh, an idea, free idea for you here. You got to put it, overlay it <laughs> over the game right where the, like, the heart monitor is when you get hit and stuff. <laughs> so yeah. it's just there the whole yeah, time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, Mike, uh, thank you so much for talking with me. I want to, again, give you big good luck uh, for your run and big like uh, props for running a game that can be as uh, scary and difficult sometimes as RE3. Uh, and I want to check in one last time because, hey, everybody, you're doing great. We're $2,000 up since we started this interview. It is currently at 66000 re refreshing right now, $839.36 out of 80000 So that, yeah, it, it, that shows you right there just how attainable this is in the next hour uh, over this Sonic Heroes run. Mike, thanks again for joining me. Uh, best of luck, like I said. And we're... Uh, thank you so much. Oh, go, no, please go ahead. I'm sorry. I keep uh, just talking. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you so much for having me. I very much appreciate it. All right. We want to see his run, everybody. Make it happen. Let's go watch some awesome Sonic Heroes by Critical Sid. And thank you, Jay Hobbs. With that, folks, we are only, we're almost at half a million dollars. Make this RE3 remake run happens. I want to see it. We all want to see it. We can do it. And with that, 